Hi boys and girls, it's Nona the Naturalist with Dana Wharf Whale Watching. And today I thought I'd bring you to one of my favorite places in my hometown of San Clemente, California. We're here at T Street. And as I look out at the ocean, it doesn't look quite as blue as it normally does. And that's because we have a phenomenon going on right now called a red tide. It really looks kind of brownish. It can be all different kinds of shades of color there. But what's causing that is a particular type of plankton in the ocean called a phytoplankton, and in particular, dinoflagellates. Now in the ocean, we have two types of plankton that make up so much of the millions and millions of microscopic animals all throughout the ocean. There are the animal plankton called zooplankton or zooplankton. Some of them stay plankton their entire life. Others are just spend a little part of their lifetime as microscopic organisms until they grow into something larger. But the other plankton are our plant plankton called phytoplankton. And in particular, right now we are looking out at dinoflagellates. Boys and girls, those dinoflagellates have the same role in the ocean as this green plant has on land. They are both producers. You and I can go to the beach and lay there all day in the sunshine and we'll only end up getting sunburned, hot, and hungry. But plants, when they're exposed to sunlight, they can take in inorganic material like carbon dioxide and turn it into food. Now the difference is, these plants on land are green because they're filled with a substance called chlorophyll. But in the ocean, the substance that photosynthesizes has a red color. So right now the ocean is full of all of these plankton. And where do these dinoflagellates come from? Well, scientists think there's several different reasons why plankton bloom at different times of the year. Here in California, we can get a plankton bloom like this um, in the springtime and then again in the late summer. Sometimes it's caused by changes in the currents, or the temperature of the water, or the amount of sunlight. But one of the main things is a change in the nutrient level. Now, if you think back to this last winter, here in Southern California, we had rain for a while, then we had a long period when it was dry. Many of us put a lot of extra fertilizers and nutrients in our yards, and there were um, crops being grown, and then we had a long period of rain at the beginning of April. So one of the things that may have contributed to this year's red tide is the rains washed all those nutrients from our land into the gutters, made its way to the watershed, and got to the ocean, and caused these plankton to bloom like this. How long it's going to last, how far it's going to extend, scientists don't know for sure. Right now, this red tide is going from as far north of us as Santa Barbara, all the way down to Mexico. But what's really neat, boys and girls, is if you can get to the ocean in the nighttime, you'll see another phenomenon. These animals, these diatoms, can actually bioluminesce. Now, bio means life, which means inside the molecules of these single cell organisms, when they get agitated by wave action at night, they flash a bright blue color, and that comes from luciferin inside of them. It's very similar to what um, a firefly would have when they can glow at night. But this is very different than the rock I have over here. If I were to put this rock in a dark room and put some ultraviolet light or black light on it, it would start to glow. And that's because I would shine an energy source on it, which would make it give off a color. But that's just luminescence, fluorescence. It's not bioluminescence. So right now, here in Southern California, we are experiencing a red tide. And I have some really tongue twister words for you. This tongue this red tide is being caused by several different types of diatoms. One is our serratium, which we have down here, and another one is lingolodrinium. You like that big word? What's nice to know about this is that these are not toxic diatoms. Sometimes we get a bloom of different uh, diatoms which actually do have toxins in them. They aren't necessarily dangerous to us, but the organisms, to feed on the phytoplankton, then get those toxins into their tissues, and then when we eat those shellfish or small fish, we can get sick. So it's very important when we have a red tide to listen to what the scientists are saying 
and know what diatoms are making the red tide. But again, this is not a toxic red tide. It's just an amazing, naturally occurring phenomenon here in Southern California right now. Bye-bye. Hey, boys and girls. It's Nona here, and I just want to clarify one thing I said. You know, it must be that quarantine brain thing going on. Both diatoms and dinoflagellates are kinds of phytoplankton. The main difference is that with dinoflagellates, they have cell walls that are made of cellulose, and they can propel themselves in the water, whereas our diatoms are made of silica, and they move at the mercy of the currents. Now, the phytoplanktons that are causing our red tides right now are dinoflagellates. Boy, I've sure given you a lot of vocabulary words to work on this week. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.